Our topic for today is properties of multiplication. Let's look at our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to state the four properties of multiplication, define each property of multiplication, identify the multiplication property used in various equations, and create multiplication equations based on a particular property. There are four properties of multiplication. What are they? The four properties of multiplication are the commutative, associative, identity, and zero property. Let's begin with the commutative property. The commutative property, otherwise known as the order property, tells us that the order in which numbers are multiplied does not change the product. Let's look at this example. 20 times 5 is equal to 100. The factors are 20 and 5 and the product is 100. The commutative property tells us that no matter the order, the product is still the same. That means that if 20 times 5 is 100, then 5 times 20 is also 100. Let's try this. 236 times 2 is equal to 472. Using the commutative or order property, can you create another equation using the given numbers? If you said 2 times 236 is equal to 472, you are correct. Awesome job, guys. Try this one. 100 times 20 is equal to 2000. Can you think of another equation using the given numbers to display the commutative or order property rule? Well, if you said 20 times 100 is equal to 2000, then you are absolutely, positively correct. Let's move on to the associative property. The associative property, otherwise known as the group property, tells us that no matter the way in which numbers are grouped, it does not change the product. Let's look at this example. If we group 10 times 2 and multiply that by 3, we get the product of 60. 10 times 2 is 20 times 3 gives us 60. If we take that same example but group different factors, we should get the same product. That's what the associative property tells us. So, if we group now 2 times 3, 2 times 3 gives us 6. If we multiply that by 10, we should get 60. The associative property. No matter the order in which the numbers are grouped, the product will still be the same. Let's try this one. Here, we grouped 6 times 4 and we multiplied that by 2 to give us a product of 48. Can you think of another equation using the given numbers to display the associative property rule? Remember, associative means to group. If you said we group now 4 times 2, which would give us a product of 8, and multiply 8 by 6 to give us 48, then you are correct. 6 times 4 times 2, grouping now the factors 4 and 2, will also give us a product of 48. Try this one. 3 
times 7 times 4, grouping the factors 7 and 4, give us a product of 84. Can you think of another equation using the given factors or the given numbers to display the associative property rule? Well, if you said 3 times 7, grouping the 3 and 7, multiplying that by 4, gives us a product of 84, you are correct. 3 times 7 is 21. When we multiply 21 by 4, we also get the product of 84. Beautiful job, guys. Let's look now at the identity property. Hmm. The identity property, otherwise known as the property of 1, says that the product of 1 and any number is that number. Let's look at this example. Here, 20 times 1 is equal to 20. Identity. Any number times 1 is equal to that number. That means that 20 times 1 is equal to 20 and 1 times 20 is also equal to 20. Try this one. 1 times 354 is equal to 354. Can you think of another equation using the given numbers to display the identity property rule? Well, if you said 354 times 1 is equal to 354, you are correct. Awesome, awesome job. Let's look at this. 999 times 1 is equal to 999. Can you think of another equation using the given numbers that will also display the identity property rule? Well, if you said 1 times 999 is equal to 999, you are correct. The identity property, the property of 1. Any number times 1 is always that number. Let's look now at the zero property. The property of zero is just as it says, the property of zero. What does that mean? Well, that means that the product of any number and zero is always zero. The product of zero and any number is always also zero. Let's look at this example. 200 times 0 is equal to 0. The factors 200 and 0 will produce a product of 0 using the 0 property rule. That means that if 200 times 0 is 0, then 0 times 200 is also 0. Let's look at this. If 0 times 63 is 0, can you think of another equation using the given numbers to display the zero property rule? Well, if you said 63 times zero is equal to 63, you are correct. Boys and girls, you're doing an awesome job. Let's look at this. 670 times zero is equal to zero. Now I'm sure you can think of another equation using the given numbers to display the zero property rule. If you said zero times 670 is zero, then you are correct. Remember, the zero property rule tells us that any number times zero is always undoubtedly going to be zero. Now, let's play Name That Property. Here, you're going to be presented with a question. In this question, you need to identify two things. You need to find N 
and you also need to identify the property that is being used. Let's see if you can do it. I know you can. 3 times n is equal to 7 times 3. Find n and name that property. If you said n is equal to 7, you are correct. Your brain is perka-lurking. And if you said that the property is the commutative or the order property, you are also correct. You got it. You got it. You got it going on. Beautiful job. Try this. Find n and name that property. 6 times n is equal to 0. I know you can do it. Think hard. If you said n is equal to 0 and if you said the property is the 0 property, you are correct. Zip, zip, zap, you're all that. Let's try this last one. Find n and name that property. 45 times n is equal to 45. Hmm, this one looks tricky. I know you can do it. Think hard. If you said n is equal to 1 and the property is the identity property, you are doing beautiful, marvelous, excellent. Awesome job, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let's review the multiplication properties we learned today. Today, we learned the commutative property. Here, the order in which numbers are multiplied does not change the product. We also learned the associative property. The way in which numbers are grouped does not change the product. Then we talked about the identity property. The property of one and any number is always that number. And lastly, we looked at the zero property. The property of zero and any number is always zero. Now, I wonder why this is important. Well, knowing the properties of multiplication is important because it makes it easier to solve those mathematics problems. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. This lesson was created by Miss Antonia Baines.